Good morning, everyone. Welcome to our service of family communion. This is the first one since we've been back together in church, so it's going to be a little different today. You have your orders of service. Please take them home afterwards, um, and they're just for today for this special service. Please remember when you come up for communion to sanitise your hands on the way up to receive, and that is the time when you can actually remove your mask when you are receiving the bread. The organ will be playing for us this morning, um, but we will not be singing, but we will just sit and enjoy hearing the beautiful hymns. Thank you. There's a couple of notices, um, important things. There is a vacancy and an opportunity in the preschool nursery. They are looking for a co-head, and that will be a job for about three days a week. So if you or you know anyone you think would be suitable, um, then please ask them to contact either the office or speak to Val about that. And also, um, we are looking for a youth intern, which will be a job for about four or five hours a week. And that one, um, again, contact the office or Val if you know of anyone you think would be enjoying doing that sort of work. I think that will be great fun, working with the youth. So it's someone we need who will be lively and fit. So that's, that probably is all of us on a good day. And also we have a new child's intern or children's intern, a lady called Diana, who will be coming um, to St Mary's to work with our children's group. And she has two daughters called, oh, a daughter called Ava May. Is that one daughter, Val? Yes. Yeah. Ava May. So we look forward to welcoming them when they come to church too. So I think that's all for now. Thank you. So we begin our service this morning with our opening prayer, which you'll find on the first page. <coughs> the Lord be with you. God in Christ has revealed his glory. Come, Come let us worship. From the rising of the sun to its setting, the Lord's Lord name is greatly to his praise. Give him praise, you servants of the Lord. Oh, praise, praise the name of the Lord. We come now to our time of looking back over the last few days and bringing before our Heavenly Father all that we wish to say to him this morning. Holy God, Father, Father of us all, we know we don't always treat each other as you want us to. Lord God, forgive us and help us to be more loving. There are times when we insist on getting our own way, despite what others feel. Lord God, forgive us and help us to be more loving. Sometimes we increase the tension when we ought to be seeking to make peace. Lord, forgive us. Help and us to be in love. love. Often we say things which hurt each other. Lord God, forgive us and, and help, help us to be in love. love. For our jealousy, our lack of respect, and times when we won't listen to those we live with, Lord God, Forgive us and help us to be more loving. And because we sometimes just get bored with each other, Lord God, forgive us and help us to be more loving. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins, restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Here are him, the verses from Let There Be Love. <laughs>
poet who is going to come and read the verses for us this morning. Let no man, let no debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For whoever loves others has fulfilled the law. The commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, and whatever other command there may be, are summed up in this one command, love your neighbour as yourself. Love does no harm to a neighbour, therefore love is the fulfilment of the law. Here ends the reading. Thank you. Val's now going to come and speak to us. I need to get the mask off. And I'm a victim of my own lack of uh, checking because actually there are a few more verses that we need to read this morning. So I'll just continue where Rosemary so beautifully finished. Besides this, you know what time it is, how it is now the, m the moment for you to wake from sleep, for salvation is nearer to us now than when we became believers. The night is far gone, the day is near. Let us then lay aside the works of darkness and put on the armour of light. An amazing verse, actually. And um, I, I heard a, a wonderful story uh, from a, a preacher, a man called Henry Madava. He's a Zimbabwean uh, pastor. He's from the Ukraine. Uh, I, thank you, Bill. Uh, he's a Zimbabwean pastor, and he, work, he works in the Ukraine. He's part of hundreds of churches in the Ukraine. Wonderful man. And uh, when he was young, he didn't have a watch. Uh, he used to walk to school with no shoes on in Zimbabwe, and he could tell the time because of the sun in the tree. If the sun was over the tree, he had to run. If it was under the tree, he was okay. One night when he was a pastor in Ukraine, he had a dream. And in his dream, he was walking to school, as he normally did. And he looked up, and the sun was right over his head. It was noonday, and he was running. And then he had a, a deep sense of God saying to him in the dream that I am coming soon. It was a very, very vivid dream, one of those dreams you really remember. He knew it was from the Lord. And when he woke up, he had an interpretation. He realised that what God was saying was that the church is getting late. We're not getting the people in who God is calling us to reach out to. It's a great challenge, isn't it, for us? Are we, individuals, people, are we getting late? Have we woken up to the fullness of God in our lives? Are we sharing Jesus in the way that God is calling us to share Jesus? Martin Luther said, didn't he? He said that, that the Christians should live each day as if Jesus Christ was crucified yesterday, was uh, risen today, and was coming again tomorrow. And that is quite a challenge really, isn't it? To live like that. Tom Wright puts it slightly differently. He talks about living in the present as if the future had come. But we can't do it alone. We need to know that God is with us. And it's such a simple command, isn't it? We're called to love. We can only love if we know that God is with us. And it's a, a very simple exercise just to become a bit more aware that God is with us. Sitting in our pews right now, we might just take a moment of silence. Perhaps we could close our eyes right now and we could just uh, open our hearts to the presence of God because he is with us right now.
There's a wonderful discipline in the Christian life. It's called the quiet time. And it really starts when we just start to be quiet. And when we start to be quiet, we begin to become aware of God's peace, of his presence. And that's when we begin to wake up to the truth that he's with us. Perhaps we walk into a room and the atmosphere in the room is anxiety and worry and stress. We can walk in to that place of stress and anxiety with that inner peace. There's a great strength in that. And it's such a simple uh, command, isn't it, that, that, that Paul has for us. Let no debt remain outstanding except the debt to love one another. And uh, what I find quite interesting is uh, the way Paul describes it here. He talks about love being the fulfilment of the law. He says all the commandments, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not murder, you shall not steal, you shall not covet, are summed up in the one command, to love your neighbour as yourself. What's so interesting about that is so often I think as Christians, we interpret our journey with Christ as one of not doing the wrong thing. We do have a habit of doing the wrong thing. If you've, uh, you know, been, been a Christian for any amount of time, you'll know that you know, we do slip up pretty much every day. And so we can focus all our attention on what we're not doing. But actually, what Paul says here, which is so helpful for all of us, is it's not so much about what we get wrong, what we don't do, we can do all that when we learn to love each other. Because love is the fulfilment of the law. And um, it's, it, it's pretty impossible to do that, as I was saying, without knowing, we can only really do this, knowing that God is with us. And, um, It's so simple, isn't it? Just when we know that God is with us, it actually gives us that inner peace and enables us to love those around us. And this, the root of all this is the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit who allows us, who enables us to learn to love each other. We can only do this with God. You see, the sort of love that we're called to show for each other, it, it is uh, quite astounding, really, when we think about how Jesus loved us. Because uh, Jesus gave everything for us, didn't he? Jesus died for us. He went to the cross for us. He was crucified for us. He was flogged for us. And that was after bringing so much goodness into the lives of everyone he ever met. So, so we know that Jesus is with us. He longs for those good things in our lives, for all the problems in our lives. He wants to help us with those things. But he's calling us to look like him. That's the sort of love we're called to show each other. We worship a crucified Messiah who calls us to love one another in the same way that he showed his love for us. It's quite a big challenge, really. Quite a big challenge. And uh, as I was saying, we really can only do this with the Holy Spirit. And there are two stories I'd love to tell that really illustrate this as I close. Um, the first is... is at sort of one extreme spectrum of showing the love of Jesus. It's told by a missionary, a man called David Hogan. He's a missionary in Mexico. Now, as you can imagine, Mexico is not the most uh, sort of hospitable place to be a missionary. And one of his pastors was attacked by a local gang with machetes, left for dead. And David found this pastor. They were colleagues. They worked together. And, and he prayed for him. And God dramatically healed this man. 
It's, I think when we're on the edge with God, God can sort of meet us in quite extraordinary ways. Anyway, uh, a few months later, this man was doing his pastoral work in the place he was, and he was kidnapped by the same gang. And they took him hand and feet, uh, ban hand and feet, into the, this very, very remote area where, where they were based. And they threw him out of a truck at the feet of the, the commander of their gang. And, uh, and, and he said, I want you to pray for my wife. His wife was dying because she had given birth and there had been a complication. She was dying in childbirth. In childbirth. I want you to pray for my wife. So uh, this wonderful missionary, he said, no, I'm not going to pray for your wife. <laughs> I'm only going to pray for your wife if these 200 gang members come here right now and they bow their knees to Jesus. And they invite Jesus into their lives. That, then I'll pray for your wife. Which they did. They came and they bowed down. They bowed their knees to Jesus. They invited Jesus into their lives. And they did become Christians very dramatically. So much so that actually they began to be pastors of all the villages in the surrounding area. And, and this man, this missionary, this pastor, did pray for the commander's wife. And she was actually healed. You see, that's walking the way that Jesus walks, isn't it? It's showing Jesus love. But that's quite at one extreme. I think that sort of feels quite extreme for most of us, doesn't it? It's quite good to hear that God can do these things. It's really encouraging that 200 murderers could become Christians and then they could become pastors of local villages and would spread the word of God. It's wonderful to know, isn't it, that God is still doing those things today. But at the other extreme of, of the spectrum, there's another story I heard this week about a, a friend of mine's mother. And uh, she woke up one night and she, she had a, a very, very dramatic experience of God. It was a vision, in fact. In her vision, she saw an angel, and she had a profound sense that the angel was telling her not to be afraid. And this happened for three nights in a row. So this is a, just someone living in England. This happened quite recently, actually. And, and what was so amazing was that actually there had been a murder in her street quite recently. And so this woman was feeling profoundly and that's the love of God. You see, the love of God is able to deal with people in these extreme situations in the world that we read about in the newspapers and we scratch our heads and we think, well, I don't know what we can do about that. But the power of God, the love of God, is able to meet people in those situations. But he's also able to meet each one of us in the simplicity of our needs. In the simplicity of our lives, the humble lives that many of us lead. And he does it as we allow his Holy Spirit to move in our hearts, as we open our hearts to the presence of God, a little bit like we did at the beginning of the sermon, of the sermon. and we just allow him to start to work in us. It's as we know his love more and more deeply in our hearts, that we're able to show that love to those around us. God is a gracious God. He loves you today exactly where you are, exactly how you are. But he wants to meet you today and to show you the power of his presence and the reality of his love. So I think it would be nice if we just did that together, wouldn't it? So let's pray. Let's bow our heads again together. And we're just going to be quiet, a little bit like we were at the beginning of the sermon. And at the beginning of the sermon, we were just becoming aware of God with us. But I'm, I'm just going to invite his Holy Spirit to come and to fill our hearts afresh in a special way today. And that's just something slightly different. It's opening our hearts to the Holy Spirit. And it's saying, yes, I, I want you to come into my heart today. I want you to meet me in all my fears, in all my problems. 
I want you to show me your love. And I want to love others that you love me. So Holy Spirit, we invite you to come right now. We open our hearts to you. We open our lives to you. to our lives afresh. Fall afresh on you today. And when we pray the prayer like that, it's always good just to wait for a minute or two, just to receive the Holy Spirit. To receive his love. Thank you, Father. I think that very special time of prayer there reminded me of my son who recently bought himself a hot tub and my four little grandchildren were in the hot tub and they were in this warm, beautiful, comforting water with all these bubbles all around them and it was as if they were immersed in prayer the warmth of God's love was on them and the bubbles of the excitement of thrill of life and of, as they come to know the Lord I just felt it was it just made me feel as though I was in the bubbles too and thank you for our really special prayer now we come to our time of family prayers too um, if you look inside you'll see that today your response is written in here and it's Lord in you we trust we look to you for help so I think let's just begin um, our time of prayer um, with that refrain so Lord in you we trust we look to you for help loving Father help us to be still in your presence that we may know ourselves to be your people and you to be our God through Jesus Christ. Lord, in you we trust. We look to you for help. We pray for the church that Christ may respond to your love by serving your kingdom with faith and courage. Call us each to follow where Jesus will lead us. Lord, in you we trust. We look to you for help. O oh Lord, we pray for peace on earth, that man will no longer prepare for war. And grant that men of all colours and races may live together in fellowship. Lord, in you we trust. We look to you for help. We pray for our nation. We pray for our Queen, our Prime Minister, for our government and for all in authority, that they will wisely and justly act for our good and for your glory. Lord, in you we trust. We look to you for help. We pray for our children going back or starting school. We pray for their teachers everywhere at this difficult time. Lord, in you we trust. 
we look to you for help. God of grace, we pray for our doctors and nurses who tend to sick and needy. Give them strength to care for each patient, and we pray for healing of those who are ill and suffering, and for families who are grieving the loss of their loved ones. Lord, in you we trust. We look to you for help. And we end our time of prayer, praying in confidence, as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. sometimes full of wrong things. We are not fit to gather up the crumbs from under your table, but with you is mercy and the power to change us. So as we do in this place what you did in an upstairs room, send down your Holy Spirit on us and on these gifts of bread and wine, that they may be for us his body and his blood. On the night he was betrayed and supper with his disciples, Jesus took bread, broke it, and said, This is my body. It is broken for you. Later he took the cup of wine and said, This is the new relationship with God made possible because of my death, take this, all of you. 
stay together. Gratitude and praise, hearts to lift with high, voices full and joyful, these you deserve, for when we were nothing, you made us something. When we had no name and no future, you called us your children. When we lost our way and turned away, you did not turn to us. When we came back to you, your arms opened wide in welcome. And look, you prepare a place for us, offering not just bread, not just wine, but your very self, so that we may be filled, forgiven, healed, blessed, and made new again. You are well. All our pain and all our praise. So we join our voices to those of the church on earth and in heaven, saying together, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Come to this table to meet the living God. Love indescribable and beyond our imagining, yet closer than our own breathing. Come to this table to meet the risen Christ, God with us, embodied in our living. Come to this table to meet the life-giving Spirit, breathing into us, renewing power. Amazing words, aren't they? Well, um, as you come today, I, as we've said at the beginning, you can take the masks off when you're coming up and do gel on your hands. Uh, probably before you receive this, it's awful to have the bread and gel, isn't it?
this is the blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, you declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gate of glory. May we, who share Christ's body, live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so that we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. And may the Lord turn his face towards you and give you his peace. And may the blessing of God, who is our Father, who is the Son, and who is the Holy Spirit, rest on you. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the, in the name, name of Christ, Christ we will.